If you have ever had the opportunity to visit Hong Kong, tourists are likely to know about Braemar Hill. This is one of the most expensive and upscale residential areas in Hong Kong. But few people know that nearly half a century ago, this was the scene of one of the most brutal and barbaric murders in the history of this country. Let's go back in time and find out why Hong Kong residents always shudder in fear whenever the name Braemar Hill case is mentioned. On April 21, 1985, a jogger on the Braemar Hills discovered the bodies of two young foreigners who had been brutally murdered. The male body was covered in wounds, while the female body was completely destroyed, with club marks, a broken jaw, and a severely damaged left eye. Braemar Hill is an extremely upscale residential area, so few people expected a murder to take place here, especially when the victim was a Westerner. After identifying the two victims, the police were able to identify them. The male victims were Kenneth McBride, 17 years old, and Nicola Myers, 18 years old, both students and British nationals. The autopsy showed that Kenneth had been tied up, beaten and strangled to death with his own handcuffs. His body was bruised with 100 blows. His girlfriend Nicola was even worse, with 500 stab wounds, a completely broken jaw, her left eye gouged out, her genitals showing signs of being crushed by sticks and water bottles, and her face still showing a grimace of terrible pain. A record 600 police and soldiers were immediately mobilized to search the entire area for clues. Helicopters also joined the aerial search. This was also dubbed the biggest bounty case in Hong Kong history, with a reward of up to half a million Hong Kong dollars for information. At the scene, the police discovered many pieces of wood suspected to be used as weapons, many torn books along the hillside, and many traces of semen on Nicola's body. However, forensic technology at that time was still very backward, so the authorities could not analyze this evidence to find the killer's fingerprints. The police also took statements from more than 10,000 people living in the surrounding area, but the case remained hopeless. It took eight months for the first piece of valuable information to surface. A young man named Pang Shun Yi bragged about killing a Western couple and claimed to be wearing Kenneth's tracksuit. In late November, police launched a 48-hour manhunt for Pang Shun Yi and four of his accomplices. According to the testimony of Wan Sam Lung, 15 years old, the youngest member of the suspects, Pang Shun Yi was the leader of the group. That day, Pang and his juniors stole cables from the government radio station to make money, but failed. At that time, they accidentally met Nicola Myers and Kenneth McBride. Thinking that both of them were Europeans and must be very rich, Pang's group decided to rob them both. But the robbery turned into a bloody attack by some of the drunken gang members. Kenneth was brutally beaten, and his legs were tied by four of his men, while Pang raped and tortured Nicola. Pang eventually decided to kill both of them, believing they would be able to identify them later. At the subsequent trial, all five defendants were convicted of murder, with the three most serious offenders sentenced to death, though all were later commuted to life in prison. One was released in 2004, with the forgiveness of the McBride family. According to Wan's testimony, he continued to have nightmares in prison and attempted suicide several times, but failed. 